Welcome everybody to our live streaming event. This informational, uh, informational meeting has been made available to all of you to answer the questions regarding the potential merger of both SAG and AFTRA. After members who are logged in and are having trouble viewing the live stream, you can please call 866-855-5191. That's 866-855-5191. And SAG members who are logged in and are having trouble, please click, click on the icon, click here to chat live, and you can speak to a technician. Um, before we start our uh, question and answers, I would love to go to New York and ask the panelists to please introduce themselves. Can we start with uh, start the Tom? Tom? Okay, go ahead. Uh, sure, I'm Tom Carpenter, I'm General Counsel of AFTRA. Hi, I'm Kim Roberts Hedgepeth, the National Executive Director of AFTRA. Hello, I'm Holder Graham, the uh, President of uh, AFTRA in New York and a National Vice President. Hi, I'm Roberta Reardon. I'm the national president of AFTRA. Hi, I'm Rebecca Damon. I'm the Screen Actors Guild New York, New York Division Vice President. Hello, I'm Duncan Crabtree, Ireland, Deputy National Executive Director and General Counsel of Screen Actors Guild. Thank you. David, would you like to start? Sure. I'm David White, National Executive Director for the Screen Actors Guild. I'm, uh, I'm Ken Howard, uh, SAG National President. Hi, I'm Ned Vaughn. I'm the SAG First National Vice President, and I'm the Chair of the Hollywood Board of Directors. I'm Amy Aquino, and I am the SAG National Secretary Treasurer. And I'm Gabrielle Carteris. I'm the President of Los Angeles AFTRA, the second VP of National, and I'm on both the SAG uh, and AFTRA National Boards. Ken? So I'm up. Hello. Thank you for joining us. It says here that I'm going to welcome you and explain the live stream. <laughs> I'm sure we're not talking technology here, just the spirit of it. Okay. For those members in the room in Los Angeles and New York, just a reminder that we are live streaming this discussion to members across the country, so you should be aware that you may be recorded both seen and heard all the time. Okay. We're all excited to be able to speak with you and to hear from you through your questions. We're also thrilled to be joined by so many of our members from across the country tonight and we have a, a, a very large uh, number that we'll know later. But we know that we've, uh, we've actually managed to reach out to a lot of people who've logged on to participate in our second ever membership informational live stream. I'm especially pleased that this event is able to include members throughout the country because during our extensive listening tours, extensive listening tours in 2011, <laughs> I was able to meet with so many members from so many branches, and one thing was made very clear to me and to Roberta Reardon as we traveled across the country together. You want us to be one union now. This is the voice of the membership, of the people who are out there who so need us to make something happen. They're saying, now, let's go. Let us give you a very brief rundown of tonight's agenda and some tips for making this live stream enjoyable and informative. First, we have a short presentation, and one that is concluded, and once that is concluded, we will open it up to questions from our participants. We are taking questions from any member, anywhere, anytime, who wishes to submit via, uh, via email at oneunion at sagafter.org. So via email at oneunion at sagafter.org, or you can tweet us your question using the Twitter handle hashtag SAGAFTRA. We've already received hundreds of questions, many on the same topics, so if we did not get to your question tonight, you'll receive a personal response from staff within the next day or two. And uh, I think that's all I have to do, and then Roberta Reardon, bless your heart dear, is going to continue the PowerPoint. Thank you, Ken. Um, it is indeed a pleasure to be here with you tonight. This is the second live streaming meeting that we've done, and as I said before in our last meeting, I really hope we continue to communicate with you this way because it really is a great way for your leadership to really have these kind of conversations. If we're not going to be face-to-face, -face, we can be voice-to-ear, um, eyeball-to-computer. So the question, the question people ask us often is, how did we get here? What was, the, 
what was the process that brought us to this room tonight and to this momentous election that we are now carrying out? Um, there were, uh, as you know, many attempts at merger over many decades between these two unions, but in the last couple of years, it really began to boil up again. There were several, I think three, very successful electoral campaigns within the Guild, and uh, they were all based on a merger platform. At, and meanwhile, and, and uh, after, we were also having this conversation. In April of 2010, there was an open letter in the After Magazine from the top officers of the National Union calling for a new union for a new century. Uh, this provoked us to finally sit down and talk to each other, union to union, about how we could accomplish this. In July of 2010, President Howard and I had dinner here in New York with Amy Aquino and Matt Kimbrough, our respective treasurers, Amy's the secretary treasurer, and we spent the evening talking about how do we want to proceed? We know that our members really want us to embark on this process, but how do we want to get there? And we decided that night that it was going to be critical for us to talk to members and get their input. We really wanted a bottom-up, a groundswell of members' input, not just several leaders going off into a small room and having, you know, hammering it out and bringing it back to you, but really talk to all of you across the country and find out what you wanted in your new union. So we formed the President's Forum for One Union, which was a high-level informal group that met periodically to discuss how we would proceed. And the first thing we did was establish the President's Listening Tour. The President's Listening Tour ultimately did 22 meetings in 13 cities over a period of six months. Uh, Ken and I went on almost all of them together. We were accompanied by many of the other elected leaders from both unions. Uh, I th I, it was an amazing experience. Ken and I used to talk about, you know, it really far exceeded our expectations. In every single one of those meetings, members said to us one thing, actually two things. We need organizing because we have found that our work is dwindling, that our work is going away to non-union performers. We need organizing. We need you to organize more work for us. And that came from everybody across the board from on-camera actors, from voiceover actors, from broadcasters, from sound recordings artists. Um, it, it was a uniform statement, please organize more work for us. At the same time, they also said to us, make us one. Make us one union with one voice. We're tired of being divided. We're tired of trying to figure out which union is representing us. Many members said to us, we're tired of doing the same service in two different unions. You know, there are lots of committees in these unions. I want to serve on one committee, not two. I'd like to serve on one board, not two. But more than anything else, they wanted us to go to our employers as one union. We, we understood very clearly that that was their desire from us. We came back from the listening tour and started the Group for One Union. The Group for One Union was composed of the two official committees of the two unions. The official committees were 13 members each. We also had alternates, we had subcommittee members. I think ultimately we had 58 members from both unions involved in this process. Uh, we had, I believe, five official G1 uh, meetings where we all met together, but we also had many, many, many <laughs> subcommittee and committee meetings. Uh, it's been a very busy year and a half or however long it's been. Uh, but we, we sat down for our first full G1 meeting in Silver Spring, Maryland at the National Labor College. And we were facilitated by two really remarkable labor leaders, Sue Sherman, from, who's now from Rutgers, who used to be the president of the Labor College, and Pete DiCicco, who's done enormous work for labor unions uh, for decades. And one of the first things they said to us was, you know, you're all experienced in negotiations. You know how to go to a bargaining table with your package of demands, and you put them on the table, and the producers come in with their package of demands, and they put them on the table, and then you duke it out. That might be a great process for negotiations, but they said to develop a new institution, we really think you need to try a different way. They wanted us to do uh, consensus building and um, what was the word that the, the decision interest making? Interest-based. Interest -based. Thank problem you. Interest-based problem solving. Uh, and they taught us how to do it. That was what we learned the first day at the Labor College. It was not an easy thing for all of us to learn because we all have our favorite positions that we like to hold on to. But it really involved asking ourselves, instead of what's my position, what am I used to, how have I done it in my union before, we would talk about issues and concerns. 
if you want to have your committees structured in a particular way, instead of talking about what you've done in the past, talk about what's your interest in having a committee and how do you want it to function? And it really began to take away a lot of the roadblocks that were there. Because instead of fighting over our familiar territory, we began to talk about the future. What would work in everybody's best interest? And I personally hope that this consensus building process really laid a foundation for the new union. I hope it's a place that we can grow from so that all of our locals can also have that kind of governance in their local and at the national level as well. So we had five G1 meetings. The last one was in January in Los Angeles. I have to say it was a marathon. It was 10 days straight. Uh, we, I am not kidding, we started at 8 o'clock in the morning. We never finished before 11 o'clock at night. We worked through lunch, we worked through dinner. I had to go to Detroit for an AFL-CIO thing on Friday, and when I came back, I said, you know what? It's a darn shame that I had to fly to Detroit to get eight hours of sleep. But that was actually the truth. Everybody worked so hard and so diligently and so collegially and so collectively. Um, I think that what we have come up with is a really fine docu set of documents, a really strong beginning for the new union. Let me stress that it is the beginning, it's not the final product. Like any other document, the American Constitution or you know anything like that, these are living, breathing documents and we will change them as time goes on because life changes, our work will change and we'll, we'll adjust as we go. But I think this is a really great beginning for our new union and I wanna thank President Howard and everyone here on this panel and in Los Angeles and everybody across the country whether you were an official member of the committee, whether you showed up at a listening tour, or sent us an email, or you're here tonight, thank you so much for your involvement and your commitment, because this is probably the most important thing that any of us will ever do in our lives as union members, and thank you all for your incredible attention to detail and your incredible spirit, it really has been a remarkable experience. And I have to say for the staff of both unions, from David and Kim on down to the local, local uh, employees, you have all worked so hard with us and supported us in just amazing ways. So thank you for that incredible effort. Um, you will be hearing about the plan tonight. I want to emphasize the timeline. Some of you tonight have already received your, your ballot package. Some of you are anxiously watching your mailbox. Uh, you will be receiving it. It was mailed out on February 27th. They must be back in the mail house by March 30th. Please do not wait until March 28th to mail your ballot because you may not get it back in time. Please open your package when it arrives, read the material, and vote. Send it back immediately. Don't wait. And one last thing, to all of us who are dual card holders, you must vote twice. This is your one chance to vote. You're all in Chicago now. Vote early, vote often. If you're a dual card holder, you get a ballot with two boxes. Just check yes in ATRA and yes in SAG and put it in the mail and mail it back. Uh, I can't emphasize enough how important it is. Vote twice because each union has to pass it by 60%. So if you leave out one, one union, you're hurting yourself. You've actually eliminated your other vote. Um, so please vote early, vote often, and vote yes. And I will now turn it over to Gabrielle. Thank you. Uh, the big question, of course, is why merge? So the most important reason for us to merge is bargaining strength. As we all know, bargaining strength is absolutely the foundation of all union protections, from wages and residuals to safety and workplace protections, and of course, need we forget, pension and health benefits. A merger of SAG and AFTRA will increase our bargaining strength and give us more power to protect and improve these vital protections. Members who are logged in and are having trouble viewing the live stream, you can please call 866-855-5191. That's 866-855-5191. And SAG members who are logged in and are having trouble, please click, click on the icon, click here to chat live, and you can speak to a technician. Um, Screen Actors Guild. 
I'm, uh, I'm Ken Howard, uh, SAG National President. Hi, I'm Ned Vaughn. I'm the SAG First National Vice President, and I'm the Chair of the Hollywood Board of Directors. I'm Amy Aquino, and I am the SAG National Secretary Treasurer. And I'm Gabrielle Carteris. I'm the President of Los Angeles AFTER, the second VP of National. Welcome everybody to our live streaming event. This informational, uh, informational meeting has been made available to all of you to answer the questions regarding the potential merger of both SAG and AFTRA. After Hello, I'm Holder Graham, the uh, president of uh, AFTRA in New York and a national vice president. Hi, I'm Roberta Reardon. I'm the national president of AFTRA. Hi, I'm Rebecca Damon. I'm the Screen Actors Guild New York, New York division vice president. Hello, I'm Duncan Crabtree, Ireland, Deputy National Executive Director and General Counsel of Screen Actors Guild. Thank you. David, would you like to start? Sure. I'm David White, National Executive Director for the... Before we start our uh, question and answers, I would love to go to New York and ask the panelists to please introduce themselves. Can we start with... Uh, start at the end of the Tom? Day. Okay, go ahead. Uh, sure. I'm Tom Carpenter. I'm General Counsel of AFTRA. Hi, I'm Kim Roberts-Hedgepeth, the National Executive Director of AFTRA. 